So usually Bernie Sanders' Twitter game is on point, but he recently put out a tweet that is uh, really wrong. It's bad on multiple levels, and I should be more specific here. One of Bernie Sanders' staffers put out a tweet on his behalf, and it reads like something an overpaid Democratic Party consultant would write, and there's like a 0% chance that Bernie Sanders himself wrote this. But it's still bad, and you know it's really antithetical to what Bernie Sanders has been fighting for, because what does the left want? What was the point of Bernie's presidency? Of course, to get policies that we want enacted, we being the left collectively, but the broader goal was to take over the Democratic Party. We wanted a hostile takeover so that way, you know, the corporate wing is no longer in control. They're no longer steering the party off of a cliff and following Republicans to the right. But before I babble on any further, let's get to the tweet itself. It says, Republicans make fun of Democrats who have political differences. Really? That's democracy. What is sad and dangerous is to see a Republican party, including many who know better, surrender to the will and vindictiveness of their stable genius leader. That's authoritarianism. All right, so first and foremost, that first sentence is incorrect. I mean, I rarely see Republicans making fun of Democrats for having political differences. I don't think that Republicans see any difference between Democrats. They don't realize that there is, you know, factionalization and intra-party warfare, quite frankly, within the Democratic Party. They don't realize the differences between the left or the center-right. And if they do, it's to be disingenuous. It's to claim that, you know, the left, individuals like Ilhan Omar, AOC, who make up a very small minority within the party, unfortunately, are the ones who are pulling all the strings. That's just not true. And just last week, in an interview with Fox Business, Dan Crenshaw, with a straight face, claimed that Nancy Pelosi is a socialist who wants to institute socialism in America. Does that sound like Nancy Pelosi? If you are on the left, in any way, does Nancy Pelosi represent you from the standpoint of her wanting to <laughs> move us anywhere near, not even like social democracy, but socialism? Of course not. So they don't have any sort of nuance when they discuss the differences between the left and the center-right within the Democratic Party. So that in and of itself doesn't make sense. You're just making that up. Uh, second of all, Assuming that Republicans actually did make fun of the differences, because maybe this tweet is referencing some interview, I don't know, but assuming that they were going to have a conversation about the differences between the left and the corporate wing of the Democratic Party, to just say that that's political differences is a gross oversimplification because this isn't about political differences. One side is driven by ideology, the other side is driven by corporate money. The left wants policies that help the working class, whereas the center and the center right in the Democratic Party, they don't want anything but neoliberalism instituted. And I don't even necessarily know that they came into Congress with this neoliberal line of thinking, but the reason why they're only willing to propose neoliberal solutions to any problems is because they are capitalists to their core. As Nancy Pelosi said, we're just capitalists. That's the way it is. And the reason why they're capitalists is because they don't want to do anything that would offend their corporate donors. Because the way that you get elected, the way that you keep your job in Congress is to make sure you can raise enough money each election cycle to put out more ads and drown out your opponent. And if you do too much and you offend your donors, then they give you less money. So if you start talking about Medicare for all... Well, your health industry donors are not going to like that and they're not going to donate to you. Therefore, that will diminish your chances of getting elected. Now, that's just one of many issues, but this isn't a real disagreement. Like, one side is bought and paid for, the other side is not. The other side actually wants real policies implemented that will affect working class people in a positive way. So this isn't some type of ideological disagreement. To call it that is incredibly disingenuous, and Bernie Sanders himself knows better, which is why the staffer who made this tweet should never be allowed to tweet on his behalf anymore. But it goes deeper than that. So the tweet also adds, what is sad and dangerous is to see a Republican party, including many who know better, surrender to the will and vindictiveness of their stable genius leader. That's authoritarianism. So first of all, it is incredibly naive to assume that there are any Republicans that know better. If you are a Republican, then you do not know better because the Republican Party's ideology 
is not just morally bankrupt, but it has been discredited on numerous occasions. But yet, we still see their worldview, a minority party's worldview, push down our throats. We're still doing trickle-down economics. They just passed tax cuts for the rich in 2017. The Republican Party is not comprised of individuals who know better on any issue. They are wrong on every single issue. And every once in a while, they'll say, say something that isn't completely insane. But I mean, a broken clock is right twice a day. We shouldn't give them credit when almost everything that they want is to the detriment of our society. They are the party of death and destruction. They want wars. They want late-stage capitalism to the extreme. So, I mean, to say that they know better, that gives them credit that they don't deserve. But furthermore, for Republicans to surrender to the will of Donald Trump, that's not authoritarianism. That is an ideological takeover. That's what we wanted to do on the left. We wanted Bernie Sanders to become president so that way we could take control of the party. Pry the corporate wing's hands off of the steering wheel and start driving the bus in a better direction. How is that authoritarianism? How is that authoritarianism? You can argue that the way that Donald Trump was elected wasn't very democratic, right? He got less votes than his opponent, and yet he still is president. You can argue based on that, but that's not really the argument here. The argument here is that everyone within the Demo or the Republican Party, rather, they basically surrendered to Donald Trump. Well, that's what happens if you win. That's exactly what we wanted to do on the left. That doesn't necessarily mean that Donald Trump is authoritarian. Putting aside his authoritarian instincts, he does have them, but that doesn't make him an authoritarian. He has created a brand of politics that the Republican Party likes. And anyone, any other Republican Party politician who doesn't go along with Trumpism, like Jeff Flake, for example, they get marginalized. They become outcasts. And that's exactly what we wanted to do on the left. Anyone who was against Medicare for All, we wanted to shame. We wanted to marginalize, right? So this tweet, it's it just from top to bottom, it's a bad tweet. As I stated, it reads like an overpaid Democratic Party consultant wrote it. And Bernie Sanders is an independent. He is not a Democrat. So it's really irritating to see him be all rah-rah Democratic Party, you know, and he's going to probably be this way until the election is over because as many people, you know, in the left have agreed, he probably just feels like he's responsible for Donald Trump winning in 2016 and he shouldn't be. He shouldn't feel responsible. That loss is on the Democratic Party, on Hillary Clinton specifically, but I mean, Bernie Sanders, what, what does this, you know, accomplish? Why would a staffer tweet this out? It shows you that Bernie Sanders surrounds himself with a lot of people who don't have interests that align with him. You know, Bernie's job is not to do Democratic Party apologia. Bernie Sanders' job is to push left-wing policies, you know, uh, on the Democratic Party, force them to adopt it, shame them until they adopt it, whatever strategy you want to do, but don't, like, lie to people about what this party is about. You can say, rightfully so, that the Democratic Party is, you know, nominally better than the Republican Party. Sure, nobody would take issue with that on the left, but you can't pretend as if they're a good party because the Democratic Party is a rotten institution that has to be taken over. It may be irredeemable, right? We may not be able to reconcile the differences between the left and the center, which is why we're having this battle, which is why, you know, we are waging war on the corporate wing of the party because we want to do what, you know, Donald Trump was able to accomplish, get them to surrender. So I just, the tweet doesn't make sense. I don't get why this was uh, greenlit by someone on Bernie's team, but Bernie, cut off their access to Twitter. Don't let staffers tweet on your behalf. We follow you because we want to hear your thoughts, not what some, you know, idiot who is one of your staffers has to say. Uh, this is just, it's, it's wrong in so many ways that I can't believe that this was approved to be tweeted out. It's a bad tweet. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.